Hello again. This is Hound Dog, with you in another aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today is 11 September 1992, and we are in the Navy's current jet trainer, the McDonnell Douglas T-45 Gosshawk. Check one two three three two one radio check. By the mid 1970s, the U.S. Navy's intermediate jet trainer, the North American T2 Bug Eye, and the advanced jet trainer, the Douglas TA4J Skyhawk, both introduced in the 1950s, were beginning to show their age. The Navy decided to replace both aging trainers with a single aircraft capable of carrier operations. In 1978, the Navy issued a request for proposal under their new comprehensive turnkey VTXTS program that not only contracted for the new jet trainer aircraft, but also included operational and instrument flight simulators, academic training aids with program training system support, and fully comprehensive integrated logistics and maintenance support. Six proposals were received, with three proposals for completely new designed aircraft and three proposals for modifications and or upgrades for existing aircraft currently flying. The Navy narrowed the competition to two teams, the McDonnell Douglas and British Aerospace team proposing a navalized version of the BAE Hawk trainer and the Lockheed Dassault Donier team proposing an updated Alpha Jet. On 18 November 1981, the Hawk was announced as the winner on the basis of its flying qualities, design maturity, and low fuel consumption. The Navy designated the aircraft T-45 Gosshawk. McDonnell Douglas Corporation was designated the prime contractor with BAE responsible for the airframe Rolls-Royce for the engines, and Sperry for the simulators. At the time of the Goshawk's selection, the Essex-class USS Lexington CV-16 was the U.S. Navy's training carrier. The smaller World War II-era Lexington had a 910-foot-long and 192-foot-wide angled flight deck with a pair of short-stroke steam catapults and short, undampened arrestor gear. Although the BAE Hawk had proven to be a successful trainer jet used by numerous countries, modifying the design for safe operations from the Lexington required significant changes. These changes included a deeper profile forward fuselage to accommodate a new stronger nose landing gear with twin wheels set six inches apart to straddle the catapult shuttle. The catapult launch bar and improved nose wheel steering. New main landing gear moved outboard by 8 inches to accommodate the extra 8 inches of stroke, giving the T-45 an extra 16 inch of wheel track. Main landing gear doors sequenced to close after wheels locked down to avoid damage by the arresting cables. Twin lateral perforated air brakes on the sides of the rear fuselage in place of the single ventral air brake. A substantially strengthened airframe and intermediate engine casing. Revised U.S. Navy standard cockpit instruments and radios. Onboard oxygen generation system and Martin Baker Mark 14 ejection seats. Side mounted under root fans or smurfs were mounted ahead of and below each tailplane and provided improved aerodynamic stability. The arresting hook is mounted on parallel beams on the modified fuselage frame with strengthened skin and is capable of sweeping left or right of center line by up to 40 degrees. To speed up introduction into service, the Navy initially planned to buy 54 land-based only T-45B versions before moving on to the fully carrier-capable T-45A. 
However, it was decided that producing all aircraft as T-45A models would be more cost effective with only a short program delay. The T-2 and TA-4J trainers remaining in service received life extension programs to bridge this delay. The T-45 design was completed in mid-1984 and development was launched for the production and flight testing of four pre-production aircraft. BAE Systems was responsible for manufacturing the fuselage after the cockpit, along with the air inlets, wings, and the vertical stabilizer. McDonnell Douglas manufactured the remaining elements of the Goshawk, as well as final assembly of the aircraft. Although the pre-production T-45 met the original contract requirements, detailed operational flight testing and evaluation by the Naval Air Test Center, Patuxent River, Maryland, identified a number of performance and flying problems. A modification program was quickly put into place to correct these deficiencies. The original Rolls-Royce F405 turbofan derated to 5,450 pounds thrust to meet Navy demands for fuel economy and longevity, was determined to be underpowered for safe carrier operations, and was replaced with a model making an additional 400 pounds thrust. Full span leading edge slats were added to improve stall characteristics, and the wing tips were squared off. A 6 inch extension to the tail fin was added, along with a wider tailplane with squared tips. A single ventral fin was added in front of the arrestor hook hinge fairing. Controls coordination was also improved with air brake and tailplane movement interconnected. Final flight testing began in September 1990 and showed significant improvements in the low speed handling characteristics and reduction in the approach speed. On 4 December 1991, the first pre-production aircraft conducted a successful series of carrier trials aboard the USS John F. Kennedy. The Goshawk's top speed is 645 miles per hour and has a range of 800 miles with a service ceiling of 42,500 feet. There is one hard point under each wing capable of carrying 12 Mark 76 practice bombs or fuel tanks. A centerline hardpoint can carry a cargo pod for crew baggage. The first production T-45A Goshawk flew on 16 December 1991 and was delivered to the Navy on 23 January 1992. Introduction of the T-45 into service at NAS Kingsville, Texas with VT-21 included the contract requirements for delivery of simulators and training facilities, transition of the Navy flight instructors with a new academic curriculum, and mobilizing the contract maintenance organization to support the aircraft. Formal student training in the T-45A began in January 1994, and on 11 February 1994, the first student pilot flew in the T-45. The first class to earn its wings in the T-45 graduated in October 1994. From December 1997 onwards, new production Goshawks, designated T-45C, were constructed with enhanced avionics systems, which included a glass cockpit and heads-up display. From 2003 onwards, all T-45A trainer aircraft were converted to the T-45C configuration. In 2008, 19 T-45C Goshawks were outfitted with the VMTS Virtual Mission Training System with a synthetic radar and simulation capabilities. These trainers were delivered to Navy's Naval Flight Officer Training School at Pensacola, Florida to prepare weapon systems officers for the Super Hornet as well as rear crew members for the EA-18G Growler, the P-8 Poseidon, the Northrop Grumman EA-6B Prowler, and the E-2D Hawkeye. In November 2009, the 221st aircraft and final T-45 to be produced was delivered. 
The Navy continues to use the Goshawk for the jet training program and with the recent Service Life Extension Program contract awarded to Boeing Corporation, does not appear to have any near plans to replace the Goshawk.